What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Flagrant Talk Sports Podcast. Moses here with his great co-host, Isaiah Gessner. What's good, everybody? And we are back after the first weekend of March Madness. <laughs> chalk, 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 but not yeah. the Jayhawks. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. What a what a fun what a fun weekend, man. Um, yeah. Couple things we saw happening happened. Couple things we didn't see happening happened. Classic mm-hmm. march in full effect, Zay. So uh of course we're here. We got a we got a second chance bracket that we're gonna go through here as we got mm-hmm. our sweet 16 finalized games coming at you this Thursday. Mm-hmm. What Zay, what do you got for the people? Yeah, so first of all, thank you again for all of the love you've shown us through our bracketologies through filling out our brackets, upset teams, players to watch, like all of that content you guys tuned into. It meant a lot to uh, me and obviously Moses. Um, So just a big thank you before we kick things off here. Um, But this video, a brief little recap. We're not going to go game by game. We're not going to, you know, anything like that. But we're going to kind of talk about some teams, some players that we want to give some uh, love to, and then, of course, fill out our second chance bracket, which is really just like filling out your Sweet 16 and on. Sure. Um, now that now that you kind of have seen all the teams play two games, you know who this. I was gonna say Cinderellas are, but um, don't there's, really got any. <laughs> there's not one. Obviously, NC State's an 11 seed, but they won the ACC. Like to mm-hmm. me. My criteria, if Oakland was here, that's a Cinderella. Yeah. NC State's not a Cinderella to me. Yeah. It's a it's so, a great story. Amazing but, uh, story. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, Mo, first and foremost, what are some uh what are some thoughts? What are some players you want to highlight, a team you want to highlight? Um, what are some of your big takeaways from those four days of March Madness? I'm gonna gonna start it off by giving my credit to Gonzaga, um, a team that I disrespected by not picking. I I knew the talent was there, but I hadn't seen it all year. Yeah. It was a shaky end to the season with the loss against St. Mary's, so I was a little worried about the Zags team. But they have come out with a chip on their shoulder and have just been falling at a level that I haven't seen throughout the regular season. Um, Mm -hmm. So they've truly hit their stride at the perfect time. So props to them first and foremost. Um, Another, I'll go with a player this time, switching over to the West region in UNC, the Tar Heels, a player I highlighted in our players video. Harrison Ingram had an amazing game against Michigan State. Um, Tom Izzo even crediting him as X factor in that game for the Tar Heels. Um, unbelievable all around 15.7 boards, just doing it all for his team, keeping them in the game when things are rocky. And he's done that all year long for this Tar Heels team. You know, he's hasn't had the brightest all around season based on stats and all that, but in those big games, he's shown up for the Tar Heels and I'm excited to see that as the lights are only getting brighter. So, Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love both those takeaways. I think the biggest one for me is, and you, you talked about it instantly, how chalky this tournament is and crazy. It's, you know, I fully understand. It's been interesting to kind of see the discourse of it on social media. Like I follow all the March Madness, Instagram accounts, Twitter accounts, everything like that. Seeing some of the comments where they're like, Oh, this March Madness is boring, whatever it is. And it's like, no, we have had incredible games. We have incredible teams still kicking all the ones, Mm -hmm. all the twos. I think two of the threes, like it's pretty crazy. I have not been bored once. Like it's just been amazing. Besides maybe watching Purdue, because they're steamrolling people right now. They yeah, uh-huh. they they came out another team with a chip on their shoulder. So that game mm-hmm. is gonna be a heater. But uh yeah, it's it's just been amazing. Biggest shout out I want to give. Well, I guess two. Starting off, 
Oakland story to me of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, Golki just stealing the people's hearts, doing NIL deals in the middle of his hotel before <laughs> his game against NC State. Like, yeah. this is why uh, March Madness is so amazing. It's my favorite sporting event every year. Um, and it's because you get to highlight, you know, Burns versus Golki in a round of 32 matchup to go to the Sweet 16, just two yep. players people love. Like, there's no other sport where you can have those kind of like different styles coexisting in a game together. Um, so a lot of love to Oakland. Mm -hmm. And then a game that I saw with my own two eyes, one of the most fun, if not the most fun I've ever had in a stadium, seeing Yale pull off the upset over Auburn. The crowd was electric. Um, if you've never been to a March Madness game, it is so cool because the whole first half, right, it's it's pretty standard. You get the Auburn fans cheering. You get the Yale fans cheering. You'll get the rest of the crowd cheering when there's like a big dunk or if there's a deep three or a, an yep. oop, something like, you know, normal stuff where you're like, oh, that was dope. Like yep. I'm an outsider. I don't, I don't have a horse in the race, um, but I just want to see a good game. And then there's a switch that flips in every single person in that arena as a team is about to pull off an upset. Yeah. Um, Mo can attest to this as well, seeing the Grand Canyon upset over St. Mm -hmm. Mary's. Mm -hmm. uh, we were both there for that as well. But seeing a crowd shift, go from like kind of neutral to, oh my goodness, am I going to witness Yale beat Auburn? And... I did, and it was incredible. Um, they got they got cooked in that round of thirty two <laughs> by San Diego State, but yeah. an amazing game and an amazing win over a great SEC school. It's it's beautiful to be a part of history and uh, yeah. just going to those games, experiencing that in person. It's just that much more. Even you know, it's the same watching it at home. People have those memories for years yeah. to come and they remember yeah. the places they were and it just it brings mm -hmm. it all the the sports world that camaraderie all that together it's beautiful yeah i totally agree with you like those moments seeing umbc win seeing yep. early dickinson win like those are monumental moments at least you know speaking personally where it's like you remember where you are you remember f your bracket getting destroyed because of it like everyone talking about it um so that's that's just why this tournament is as cool as it is um for sure a ton of amazing stories um i, I love it yeah some other teams uh duquesne pulling the upset over byu yep. uh we had who were some other ones grand canyon who we talked about mm -hmm. that crowd mo my goodness St. Mary's. I'm a Zags fan. The people know this. Born and raised Zags fan. They did y'all so dirty putting you in Gonzaga territory. It was an away game. Like, you would Clearly. think they were playing the Zags. Yeah. Like, legitimately. Every, every time they had the ball, booze raining down the entire <laughs> possession, screaming while they're shooting free yeah. throws. But for Grand Canyon, you could hear a pin drop when they're shooting yeah. free throws. The, the crowd nothing. was quiet for them on offense. It was it was literally a home game. It, yeah. was, it was insane. Yeah. So, St. Mary's, I'm, listen, I, I understand the pushback. I understand what people are going to say about, like, hey, you're the five seed. Take care of business. But that does suck. <laughs> yeah. Having to you're playing a road game, um, which we'll get to Alabama as well because they face that same thing in the same stadium. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, being able to to go into those tough environments and get a win is even more satisfying. So mm -hmm. that much more of a confidence boost as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's it's been an amazing tournament. We're set for some incredible games like yeah we are not just now but what could go obviously in the elite eight final four and uh championship so mm -hmm. we're due for some bangers
Yep. Yep. Um, Mo, is there anyone else or anything else you want to highlight before we kind of dive into the bracket? Um, Another upset wasn't yeah. really an upset around the time the game started because they seemed to be a favorite, but a team that you picked, James Madison, took out yeah. Wisconsin in the first round in a pretty solid victory by them, I believe. Yeah. One by, what was the score here? One by uh, 11. So a great mm-hmm. win for them in the first round. Yeah. Um, then ran into just a monster of a Duke team who is on fire. They, um, they've impressed. Scary. Yeah. They've impressed, man. I And mm-hmm. I had James Madison beating Wisconsin, but the bigger upset, I had them then beating Duke. Yeah. And going to the Sweet 16. I was wrong. Um, mm-hmm. That Duke team, Jared McCain. That's my guy, first of all. But my goodness, 30 points. 30 points. Like the second most behind Zion. And like Mm -hmm. when you're wedged in between Zion and Kyrie for a Duke stat, you're doing something right. For sure. (laughs) So that's that's impressive in its own right. Um, there were a lot of teams in this that just impressed me. Yeah. Like um one of them and we'll we'll talk about them too is clemson yeah (laughs) you all know i picked new mexico to go not just beat them but go on a run go deep in the tourney Mm -hmm. and and i even so i went back to our video and looked i even tell you i say i'm so confident in new mexico that you can almost guarantee that clemson is going to beat them and here it was. Um, it happens. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. You know, sometimes those Cinderella teams don't do you right. And sometimes the ones you don't predict go through brust in your bracket. But uh, mm-hmm. a lot of respect to Clemson, a team that I picked against. Um, Marquette. I was about to say Marquette was the last one for me. Um, yeah. but we, there's an asterisk there for our hate on them because we Without did base it on the health of Kolek and he's been mm-hmm. healthy and he's looked like the Tyler so Kolek good. of the regular season. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, really, really in that Colorado game too, just was able to flip a switch mm-hmm. and go, okay, call Col- like Colorado would not go away. And it really did feel like they were going to get upset. Like they needed it. Yeah. They needed him to show that he was the best player on the court and that, and he did. And he took over the game and, and he did win. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. We are in no way hating of Marquette. I I've said it in like all of our videos. I'm pretty sure we both had them going final four last year. Yeah. So, you know, there's no hate there. I seriously was just worried a little bit about Colic's health. He's looked amazing, and Marquette looks great because of it. So mm-hmm. that we'll see how far they go. I'm excited for that game against NC State, though. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we uh, we tip off this the Sweet 16 bracket? I think I'm ready for my my second chance. The second chance. Um, we talked about it off stream, but. How many um, elite eight teams from our bracket that we had do you have that are still kicking? I have seven out of eight. Kentucky is my only missing piece, but um, I'll take it. Yeah, I I told Mo I came in. I'm like, hey, I, I got six of my eight. The only ones I'm missing is Kentucky and New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And Mo was like, oh, I got I got seven. I'm like, yeah. oh, nice. Um, I mean, my my percentage on my bracket and my max wouldn't let you know that, <laughs> but um, but uh, seven, <laughs> yeah, you know, so we'll we'll take it. Yep. Um, going through this bracket, we'll go east, west, south, midwest, and then I have the spread of all the games, so I'll I'll bring that up just so you, as a viewer, have it for a little more context. Um, this first game, a Thursday game, a championship game rematch between UConn and San Diego State. Mm-hmm. UConn just looks like uh, as good as advertised. Yeah. Like putting it simply, 
Um, I Two love dominant performances, dominant in both sides of the ball. Like, yeah, that's what makes them so scary. Is if their offense struggles a bit, that defense can come through and and hold them over mm-hmm. for a stretch of time. And when that defense, if they're allowing some easy baskets, they can keep up with any team in the country for sure. Um, they can push the pace. They can they can play set. They they can yes. do it all. Yeah. They uh, exactly they can mm-hmm. match any play style you want to bring for sure, and that is the a championship level team. We talk about it in the NBA too. Like, how many lineups can you have? Mm-hmm. How many different versions of your team can you have? Because that's how you define a contender. Yep. UConn, like it, it's like uh, what's the Pokemon? It, it's Ditto. I'm pretty sure is its name where it just yeah. like matches whatever you want. Mm-hmm. That's UConn. They yep. they can adapt to anything. Um, the spread on here, 10 and a half points <sighs> for UConn. So the only, I believe, the only double digit spread of wow. any of these sweet 16 games. Wow. Even the NC State Marquette game. Yes. Yeah. That okay. one. I'm glad you brought. The, yes, that one is six and a half. Okay. So the only double digit spread. So they're, they feel pretty good about UConn. I'm a little, little surprised if yeah. San Diego State's game scores were switched their first round and second round because they their first round game was close. Man, UAB what? pushed them to the Great to the game. final whistle. Really good game. Um, but they came out against Yale, like we talked about, and just absolutely wiped the floor looked like the better yeah. team in every aspect yeah um some i'm kind of surprised by the spread but i'm too. I'm, I'm joining the the makers i'm, I'm joining joining vegas on this one and yeah. i got yukon I, I don't know about the spread i don't i wouldn't trust the spread but i no. i i love yukon here to win this game um stay dominant um yeah. in boston should should be Dude. virtually a home game for them. Yep. Um, San Diego State fans got to travel a long way for this one, but uh, mm-hmm. they should be out there. Should be should be a good game, exciting crowd. But uh, yeah, I got the Huskies. I agree. I have UConn. You know, defending their title, uh, beating San Diego State again. <laughs> San Diego State was a team that I saw in that UAB game as well, mm-hmm. and just like seeing how good Jaden Ladee is he is in the jump he's had offensively in his career is incredible like yeah a legitimate threat to score 30 on Mm -hmm. anyone Mm -hmm. and um I I will say for UConn uh their head coach Dan Hurley he was interviewed about hey you're gonna have the early tip time you're gonna have the first tip time uh, by the way, against San Diego State. And Hurley said, yeah, I mean, the committee's made it clear that uh, they want to do anything to see us lose. They want to uh, just make sure that we don't go back to back, and that's fine. We'll use it as fire. And I love that. Yeah. That's that's the mentality you want to see. Mm-hmm. Him saying to just keep blowing teams out. Mm-hmm. That is crazy ruthless like, yeah i love it's it ruthless just straight cutthroat like mm-hmm. hey you are the better team we know that show the rest of the country that you are that and yukon has done that exact thing their first two games by far um, uh yukon was my pick and yours to win the championship they've mm-hmm. given me no reason to to worry about losing in the sweet 16 up to this point I got a couple changes. Um, I my UConn thoughts have not changed at all. So, Ex- perfect. That that is yep. the perfect way to to summarize that. Yeah. Um, the next game, maybe. Ooh, this might be the best game of the Sweet Sixteen to me. There's so I many. Think it was play. yeah, for sure. Every every yeah. one of these games is a good game, but yes. for me, this was probably the one I spent the most time on picking yeah. going back and forth. Cause originally I had Illinois, but Iowa state, man, they, it's been weird. Their offense has been inconsistent, but they've just, mm-hmm. they lean on that defensive backbone that they've had all year and it's kept them in games and it's kept them alive. Yep. And it's, it's scary because 
obviously this Illinois team has offense. They got Terrence Shannon. They've been putting up points. Yeah. But when you run into a stifling defense like the Cyclones got, it's uh it's gonna be fire fighting fire. And I'm I'm all in to get the popcorn yeah. food and yep. sit back and watch. But uh I agree. I want I want I want to I want you to make your pick first. I have mine. But okay. Give me give me okay. your, your analysis. Let me let me tee this up because what you said about Iowa State's defense being the backbone, it arguably, I mean, it's side by side with Houston. They're yeah. both incredible defensive teams, and that to me was the most impressive thing about their win over WSU. Um, yeah. Watching the game, the start of that game, they could not take the lid off the basket, like. The first were nine missing. shots, yeah. I think, 10 shots. Yeah. It was just like, how does that not fall like over mm-hmm. and over and over? And for a lot of teams, it would be demoralizing. You'd just be like, well, we're, we've lost. Like you're starting the marathon a couple miles yeah. behind, man. Yeah. It, exactly. Mm-hmm. And WSU came through with that solid offense that we had seen this year out of the Pac 12. And, I was worried. I, I I had Iowa State beating them, but I'm like, man, if they can't get that thing going. But their defense was able to do just enough to keep them in striking distance where if that offense kicks in, they were going to be able to win the game. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, Iowa State, very impressive performance. With that being said, I had this originally in my Elite Eight with Illinois. And again, just have not given me a cause for concern. That offense is stupid. Yeah. Um, I totally understand people that say, hey, well, they got two double digit seeds in their first two games, uh, getting Duquesne instead of BYU. Like mm-hmm. they had a bit of an easier path. But you can say that for anyone, you got to beat who's in front of you. Mm-hmm. This offense is explosive. Yep. It's going to be a battling of, of two different play styles, and I seriously can't wait to see it unfold. Iowa State is two and a half point favorites is the, the last thing oh, I wow. want to add. All yeah. right. Um, so, tight. To, um, what do you for got? Sure. For sure. To uh, to add, I am joining you with the Fighting Illini. Uh, I agree. To to go off your statement of the two double-digit seeds, yeah, it's, it's tough. It, 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 yeah. It's not in their control. But every team at this point in the season is hungry. Duquesne coming off an upset victory. Yeah. They're dangerous, man. So I'm I'm not going to pin that against them. I, I see the argument, but mm-hmm. I got Illinois. I think the offense is just going to slightly overpower the defense. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm super excited for this one. Yeah. I, and again, I stress it in every single one of our videos. Guard play gets you far. Iowa State absolutely has that. This is like yeah. as 50-50 of a game <laughs> as there could ever be. Mm-hmm. Um, it really feels like that one could fall down to like whoever team has the ball last, they're going to win. Yeah. And I cannot wait to watch that. Uh-huh. Um, do we want to make... Are UConn Illinois pick now, or do we want to wait? And do yeah, I'm it? ready. Oh, take it, take it away. I got the Huskies. Yeah. Um, they've just been the more athletic, the bigger, the faster, the stronger. The they've just been the team uh, so far in this tournament, and. It would be a great Elite Eight matchup. Two teams going off two great wins against two great teams. Yeah. But I would have to I'd have to lean with the Huskies again. Like we said, uh stuck with them originally, and they've only given me pluses to add to that thought. So yeah. I I agree with you. I'm taking yeah. UConn as well. This is the Elite Eight matchup and Final Four, you know, winner. Yep. Uh things stay the same here. Again, amazing season for Illinois. Amazing season for all these teams. You made it to the second weekend, so at minimum, you you met expectations at a minimum. For sure. Um, it's pretty crazy that all the ones and twos are here. Yeah. Given, I, I'm pretty sure the last 
three years of 15 seed or 16 seed is one. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I, I just think UConn's ridiculous. Um, I did see Seth Greenberg on get up. He said that UConn, if they were in the Eastern conference would be a playoff team. Okay, bro. Yes, thank you. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. See, we, cause you're just setting them up to be disrespected. Yeah. You, like your take is wrong. Yeah. It, it's wrong. If mm -hmm. dude, if you take, well, maybe not. I was going to say the Washington Wizards and put them in here. They'd win. I I, I feel like they would. They got to. They're they NBA have players. To. It's a different game. It's faster. It's Yeah. They have, it, they'd have to. But. but it's like, you know, that means they're top 10 in the East. That's not happening. That's crazy. Like, yeah. If the Pistons are in here, if Cade Cunningham is in this tournament, if Jaden Ivey is in this tournament, if our guy Marcus Sasser is in this tournament, come on. So I, yeah, I just man. Yeah, man. wanted to get that out of the way because I heard that yeah. today and was like, whoa. Let's chill out. Let's chill yeah. out. Listen, we we all love UConn, but relax. Yep. Um, Down to the West, though. One seed North Carolina, four seed Alabama. The Tar Heels are four and a half point favorites in this one. Okay. They uh they've looked great. Yeah. Coming off two solid wins. Wagner and Michigan State in this round of 32. Mm -hmm. This Bama squad, we saw them live. Man. Two road games. Uh, I mean, not the first one. The first one's neutral. Uh, yeah. The second one against GCU. Yeah, that one's mm -hmm. Second one against GCU. Road game. Yeah. Round 32. <laughs> yep. Insane. Um, just a sloppy game. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't really. It was just kind of mayhem, but they, they got it done. And in the environment, that that's a huge plus for me. Um, I didn't have them here. I had them getting upset in the first round. So, uh, but we we talked about it. We knew mm -hmm. they could put up the points that they could. This game, I'm sticking with UNC. I've had them. Uh, Bama's looking dangerous. They're looking tough. Yeah. But I think North Carolina has the recipe to slow them down. It's going to be tough to start Mark, Mark Sears right now. He's he's playing at a different level, but I think R.J. Davis and company, I think overall the better team, mm -hmm. I think they, they pull out the victory here. Yeah, Mark Sears is a bad man. Yeah. That dude is ridiculous. And again, you get a like a better... Uh, kind of understanding of a player when you see them in person. Mm -hmm. Watching Mark Sears is it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, you can't stop him. He is going to score on you. So yeah. accept it. Like he will get hot. Um, for North Carolina, they were trailing Michigan State. They were down like eight or nine, and I was like, oh man, maybe. Maybe Izzo really has got that magic in him again. Um, and North Carolina weathered the storm. Came all the way back, took care of business. That was mm -hmm. really impressive to me. For um, sure. Because it's not easy against any opponent. It's definitely not easy against Izzo. Mm -hmm. So a big win for the Tar Heels there. But I want to give a lot of love here to the Crimson Tide. We talked about it. We know what their offense is. We have mm -hmm. praised it all year. But to me, the most impressive thing in their two victories, primarily their win over Grand Canyon, is how amazing their defense was. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying it's up there with like Iowa State or Houston, but they were able to hold their own. They they looked great. Like if you didn't see Alabama all year and all you do is turn into the tournament, you think they got a pretty solid defense there. Yeah. Uh, 
that to me is the biggest X factor against the Tar Heels. If that defense can play at that same level, it might be enough to, mm-hmm. to pull off the upset. Um, but at this moment, I'm sticking with you, I've yeah. got the Tar Heels as well. Um, this was the hardest game for me to pick, though. Yeah. I really struggled um, with the way Bama's been playing. That GCU game just so sloppy like they're diving everywhere players are like laying down in between like possessions like Mm -hmm. trying to catch their breath and bama came out on top in a road environment um mark sears quieting the crowd it they've been very impressive to me Um, yeah but the tar heels have the sauce for sure Mm -hmm. (laughs) stick Mm -hmm. it i love it this next one, team we we talked about in Clemson, a team who deserved a little more flowers, yep. demanded their respect. Mm-hmm. They are going against Tommy Lloyd in Arizona. That is a seven and a half point spread in favor of Arizona going into the game. Um, who have you got in this matchup? This is a this is a tough one. Then tougher one than it may seem um clemson's been looking great and doing it while their best player has been getting into foul trouble not really playing his best pj hall Mm -hmm. um hasn't you know he was in foul trouble against baylor wasn't on the court in massive parts of the game um and they still managed to pull it out so that's giving me some some points for the tigers uh didn't know they had some depth over there but Mm -hmm. their guys are stepping up at the right time as for arizona they've been looking solid looking steady i'm gonna go with them to knock off clemson i think omar has a great game um they're i just (sighs) look good man so is Clemson. Yeah. We 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 kind of disrespected Clemson. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going Wildcats. No, it uh, and again, real quick before people say like, hey, it's a little too chalky. It's gonna be chalky by default. Um, the tournament is been chalky. Sorry. Yeah, it, it's been chalky. The best teams going into the tournament have shown that they were deserving of that seed. So yep. I will be joining you here with the Wildcats advancing. But yeah, like you said, the most impressive part is in our bracket video, I said, hey, PJ Hall has the ability to kind of be that like staple for Clemson, like to be a tournament staple where he's leading his team. Uh, They were underdogs against New Mexico, you know, spread wise and took care of business. Um, But it hasn't been that. It's been a full team effort. Yep. Clemson has looked really, really good. Do they have one more game in them or more? I It's fully possible. Um, yeah. But I think Arizona, similar to a Purdue team, are weathering some of those demons from last year and showing that uh, they're poised to make a potential Final Four run. Yeah. And uh, these these West games are in L.A. as well. Yes. So a little bit of a home court advantage for the Wildcats. Yeah, that helps. That mm-hmm. helps for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, a one-two matchup, two best teams in the West going at it. This would this would be – it's the Caleb Love. The reunion. Battle. The reunion. Who do you have coming out on top? Is it his former team or his current team? team i'm scared of saying this because i can see him now hitting a pull-up three as the time expires to win the game for the wildcats but i'm gonna go with the tar heels to win this game and make it back to the final four i agree with you um this would be an amazing game the big thing here too is if arizona wins getting to play in glendale for the final four and ship Mm-hmm. That just having home court advantage in the two biggest games of your season yeah. would be 
huge. Like if they got here and squared off against UConn or Illinois or Iowa state or whoever they would meet San Diego state, um, it would be hard to pick against them with that uh-huh. advantage. Um, but yeah, I'm joining you with the Tar Heels. They've looked great. We've talked about it. Um, but man, I've, I'll, I'll be honest. I really want to see that matchup. They would be so fun. That would be like, such a high intensity smoke yes, fest man. of a game. Yeah. It would be, it's too good. It's mm-hmm. too good. I feel like it's got to happen. Yep. Um, on to the South region now. We got one seed Houston against four seed Duke. That spread is four and a half in favor of Houston. Okay. Um, so that's what we got there. Duke is on fire. They are hot. They are hot. And Houston coming off of an absolute scare against AM hung on by a thread. I mean, four of their players fouling out. Like you you had, you know, game clinching free throws by a player who took four free throws all season who clinched it up for you. Insane, like, dude. LJ Cryer out, Jamal Shed out, like and thank God for him before he fouled out, because yeah. if he fouled out sooner, the game was over. He he kept them afloat without a doubt and i Mm -hmm. i think i love this houston team i had them in my original video going to the chip they do that their one like real flaw is sometimes they let teams linger yeah and i'm not saying within like two but sometimes a team they can't like put a team away sometimes they'll linger around six seven points they're they're up 10 on texas a&m with a minute something to go yeah and that one feels a bit more of an anomaly because it's 10 that's a fluke yeah that's that's insane yeah you assume at that point with the time left in the game like okay how many things have to go wrong here for them to (laughs) really like win this yeah (laughs) and it it almost happened Mm -hmm. um but it, still, them being able to pull that off, given all the foul trouble and a and storming back, sending it to OT on that three, um, was impressive. But this Duke team, man, I cannot say enough good things. Like, they've been God amazing. the right time, bro. They are they're coming off their best game of the freaking year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Filipowski struggled in game one, played a little bit better yep. in the round of 32, but still hasn't really been the nucleus like he has been all year. It's been the McCain's, it's been the guards. They've been mm-hmm. locked in. I'm I'm leaning blue devils in this matchup. Wow. I'm leaning blue devils. Oh, this is wow. my this is my first change of the video. I, wow. I had to I had Duke going out, I believe, fairly early. I had them losing to uh, Wisconsin in the round of 32. Oh. Um, so, oh, snap. Yeah. yeah. I uh, didn't expect them to even be here, but they're here, and they're one of the hottest teams that are here right now, and mm-hmm. I'm riding the hot hand with Duke. Yeah, they were a team going into this tournament that wasn't, Play, they weren't playing terrible, but it just wasn't what I wanted to see. Going, I wasn't, into yeah, I wasn't high on them. That's no. That's why I had them out in the round of thirty-two. Yeah, I did. I, just, I did too. I, I um, wasn't feeling the vibe from the team this year. No, no. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, with the way they played those first two games, it's like, damn. Can you stop that? Because it's, it, tough it, it's to pick against. It's tough to pick against. I have Houston still. I'm I'm anchoring on that defense, but I would be lying to you. If you would have told me this at the start of like Houston Duke, they're gonna be in the sweet 16, I'd be like, okay, well, Houston, I'll Houston. have advanced in the Elite Eight. Yep. And then move on. Like it's a that's fine. Like Duke is good, but this Houston team is better. Mm-hmm. The way Duke has been playing, I cannot fault you for picking Duke at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I love it. I love. I love first it. switch. Damn. First switch. But I'm. I'm. 
I'm so tempted to join you. I'm hanging on by like a thread for Houston. So okay. mm-hmm. I'm not mad at it. But do you have, most importantly, NC State knocking off Marquette in an ACC matchup in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four? So I know we had spoiling. I, I know we had this long spiel on not being disrespectful and this and that. And I'm a stubborn 20 year old kid, <laughs> man. And I really like DJ Burns. <laughs> and I I really like the Wolf Pack. And I'm I'm rolling with them. But I this this is my most worrisome pick so far yeah yeah by that's far. fair that's fair um, they're the only double digit <laughs> so um, can... i'm worried because i mean at the beginning of these talks you know with colex injury status up in the air and mm-hmm. all of that i wasn't really high on marquette thought they were kind of running on mm-hmm. wits ends i kind of thought it was over but yeah they've looked good and they've shown that they're a great team they could still play in this tournament but I'm going. I'm going with the story and DJ Burns, and I don't. I'm. I don't know how Marquette's going to guard him, but if they're sending a double, he showed last game that he can pass out a little bit. It wasn't. It's nothing Jokic like, but no. he can find the open man, and that man might swing it to the next guy, and they'll get an open shot. I just. I really liked their offense, and I'm. I'm rocking with it. I'm rocking with it. Yeah, I'm excited to see him in Igudara. Uh, square off because obviously mm-hmm. just two big men that are gonna uh, go at it. Yeah. Um, these were two teams. I and again, I I gotta hold off on saying I disrespected teams. I had just fair reasons to be like, ah, uh, I don't Cautious. know. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Where it's mm-hmm. like for NC State, like, did you already have your Cinderella magic winning the ACC? It was yeah. was my mentality. And then they win two games, and yes, one was against Oakland, whatever. But they still won on a team that is – they beat Kentucky. They're, they're they, on 10. They were upset hungry. They were looking to go on a run. They were hearing all the noise. They mm-hmm. that That's not a bat, of a bat of an eye game. No. You, just, you, you can't just walk past that one. No, not yeah. at all. So NC State's impressed. Marquette, if they were 100% healthy – I would have had like minimal to no concerns, but Colic being out, as you said, was worrisome. He's yeah. back, he's balling, but I'm joining you. Wow, in the Wolf Pack pulling off the upset. See, when we won't learn, win. we won't learn. We won't. And and again, these are two teams who, to me, have exceeded NC State. Obviously, has yeah. exceeded expectations. They even if they lose by fifty. Who cares? You you had an amazing run. You won the mm-hmm. ACC as a double digit seed in it, and then go into the tournament as an eleven and make it to the Sweet Sixteen. If that's how your season ends, clap Pops. it up. And yep. then losing to a tough Marquette team, totally cool. But something about this NC State team, man, they're just they're on fire. Like. Yeah. And they've got multiple guys who can get you outside of Burns. So I 100%. I agree with you, but man, this is a tough one to pick. All of these are, but this one is like, I I want them both to advance, but mm-hmm. um, I don't know if I said the spread on it. That one is six and a half in favor of Marquette. Yep. Just to have that out there. Um, to go. What, I don't think you said what was Houston Duke. I don't know if you said that one. Just Houston say. Duke is a four and a half in you favor did say of that. Houston. Okay. okay. Yep. Um. So for you, you have an ACC matchup. Uh-huh. Duke, NC State. What ACC team comes out on top? I got the Blue Devils getting redemption after losing in the ACC tournament to this team. Went on to win it. And I have them taking the overall season series, their third matchup of the season. Um, again, just gonna ride the hot hand. Yeah, I just I'm 
we've been saying like NC State, are they depleted? Or, or is it is the magic over? Like, yeah, I get picking them here because why would it not be over if they've made it this far? But totally, I I got I got Duke to make up for tie up the loose ends. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this matchup, I have Houston facing NC State. And I as well feel like that Cinderella run kind of it comes to an end. Um, it, it's difficult, though, because, you know, as you said, we've texted about it where it's like eventually they're going to hit a wall, right? Like, yeah, they seem to be running on fumes a little bit, not in their play, but just like you're stringing all of these super difficult wins together one after another, like won five games in five days in the ACC, and then you come in here, you upset a team in the first round, and then you handle America's sweetheart, like the biggest upset of the tournament in Oakland over Kentucky, yeah. and you, you don't let it phase you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this is tough, but yeah, I've got I've got the boring Cougars pick going Final Four. They, they're making a return. Yep. Um, down to the Midwest, Purdue and Gonzaga. You talked about them in the opening of the episode. The Zags on fire. The Boilermakers on fire. Uh, these two teams, for those who don't know, faced off back in November. Purdue won by 10 in the Maui Invitational, so on a neutral site. Mm-hmm. Uh, but both these teams playing their best basketball right now. Two very different teams. Very. Two teams Five playing and- some of their best defense yeah. of the season and debatably their best offense as well. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you can continue. Five. Five, uh, five and a half point spread for Purdue. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think it's close one. I like the spread if I'm a Zags fan. I do too. I'm taking the spread. Yeah. As for the game and the money line. Oh. It's a tough one because, yeah, as as we talked about these two teams, best basketball this season, head-to-head clash. I got Purdue in a by slim margin. Um I don't know if Gonzaga can continue to shoot as well as they've been shooting. It is it has been ridiculous. Um, yeah, just it's it's, a, it's tough, man. It's a tough tourney. You're gonna mm-hmm. be facing toughest defensive team in the tourney. Kansas mm-hmm. was a little depleted. McNeese, they are more offensive sided, so this is gonna be a dog fight. And I got Purdue by a hair. In this matchup, I had this when I filled out my original bracket, and I had Gonzaga pulling off the upset to go Elite Eight. I still feel that way now. Okay. And this is, like, it, it, it's so difficult because Purdue is playing incredible basketball. Like, yeah. They're, they're playing so good, and I think the thing that kind of caught them last year was their pace of play was so slow. And it's not anything like crazy this year. It's not like a massive improvement, but it's a big improvement over what it was. Yeah, um, They play with a little bit more speed. Their shooters have been a little more dependable. The biggest thing, as it is for every team going up against Zach Eady, can you defend him? And not just can you defend him, can you defend him without fouling? Mm-hmm. Um, the Zags, one of the biggest changes they made was putting Ben Gregg into the starting lineup over Dusty Stromer. Mm-hmm. Gives them another physical body. When these teams played last time, Ben Gregg was not in the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Zags have bodies. They can be physical. Greg is going to swipe at the ball. EK can swipe at the ball. Anton can swipe at the ball. Nemhard has always got his hands in, you know, different cookie jars. And so mm-hmm. Dusty Stromer is a very, very good defender. Um, 
Edie dominated the Zags last time. They didn't have an answer. I don't know if they'll have an answer this time, but I've got the Zags scraping through, going to the Elite Eight. They they have the cheat sheet now. All they got to do they is do. ace the test. Yeah. It. Come on, bro. I've been rocking with the analogies. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like it's a you good cook. way to express. <laughs> you cooking, bro. No, I love that. That was perfect. <laughs> it's you. yeah, it's what it is. You've you've not just seen him, you've played him firsthand this season with this team. Yep. Now it's I, I just feel like again, you lost by 10 when Graham Mike wasn't playing his basketball. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they were just it's so different. So different. Like yeah. Dusty is now on the bench and thriving way more in his role. Ben Gregg is a starter. Man, he has been incredible. Like, yeah, just especially that game against Kansas. He got that big bucket at the end of the first half. That if once he, he hit that and they went into the half, all momentum was in the Zags' hands. It was like, yeah, they came out in the second half and it was over. Yeah, so I I feel like it'll continue. As you said, they've been shooting at a clip that they have not shot at all season. Yeah. Um, that's going to be the biggest thing, too, is like, can you be solid with that mm-hmm. again? Because mm-hmm. uh, you're going to have to be. You're going to have For to be. For sure. For sure. Everything's got to be firing. Yeah. Um, on to the last matchup. Of the Sweet 16, Creighton, Tennessee. This will be the final game played of the Sweet 16. Tennessee, two and a half point favorites over Creighton. I believe we both had this in our brackets. Yeah. In our original. Yep. So we're yep. locked in down here. Yeah. I originally had Creighton beating Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Creighton coming off an amazing hard-fought win against Oregon in overtime. Game, I I thought they were going to lose for a bit there, but they pulled it out. Tennessee shot extremely poor against Texas. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Unbelievably poor poor against Texas and still got a win. So shows they can weather the storm. My, that's my worry in this matchup for them. I, I don't see them shooting that bad two games in a row in March Madness. You, there's no way, right? That, like that. It was unworldly. Like it was yeah. insane. Like connect Ziegler, all of them just yeah. nobody could hit. Um. So that's that's my one concern with this game is I, I don't see them shooting that poorly again but i'm i'm still Mm -hmm. rocking with the blue jays like i originally had wow um okay tough win obviously a little depleted you know there's a little scare there but they've been to this point they've been on the outside sniffing the final four so many times they didn't Mm -hmm. get their big east tourney win that they wanted this year i'm gonna give them some form of victory get them to the elite eight face off against Purdue for context as to how bad Tennessee is shot three of 25 from long range good enough for 12 percent that is ridiculous 22 for 65 from the field 33 percent and they won by four against a solid Texas team Mm-hmm. Um, as you said, there's like, no, here's the thing. If they shoot that poorly or in that vicinity against Creighton, they lose. Yeah. By 20. That, that, oh. Yeah. No, I mean, they yeah. they probably, yeah, they probably lose by double digits. Mm-hmm. I had all of these teams last time in our original bracket and I had Tennessee winning. And I'm sticking with Tennessee, meeting up with Gonzaga in the Elite Eight. Um, no reason to change it. Yeah, it's and again, Creighton has played great as well. It's where both these teams have kind of given me, you know, they've played 
I don't want to say great. They've played very solid. Yep. Um, but, you know, Creighton not being able to put away Oregon, which was a two-man team, basically. At that, that Literally. Point, yeah. Like a two-man team. And, and then Tennessee is shooting as awful as they did. Um, it, it's just been cause for concern. There's been a slight one for both teams. They're very good. Both have Final Four championship upside. I'm sticking with Tennessee, sticking with Dalton Connect. I feel like he's due for his big one. And yeah. uh, I think it comes in this game against Creighton. Mm-hmm. Respect. So, two opposite picks here. I've got the yeah. Zags in Tennessee. You've got Purdue v. Creighton. Who do you have coming out on top meeting? Let me get this set for you. The Duke Blue Devils. I got the Blue Jays chopping down the timber. Going to the final four, man. Wow. I, it's just a feeling. It's what I've had originally I, i'm sticking I, I i had my one my my changes up top in the in the south i'm trying to i'm, I'm staying comfortable I'm staying comfortable yeah. Young, it was hitting me yeah it was hitting me yeah, this no, video man, it, i apologize it, for that smack me in the face out of nowhere yeah. i was about to say something in my yep. it was like no nah. yes yeah, i'm gonna say mm-hmm. um as for me, I, listen, I can't be mad at your pick here. I, yeah. I think Creighton, again, they haven't, you know, they haven't given enough of a cause for concern. If you had them go in Final Four before, they haven't played, like, bad enough or anything like that to where you'd maybe let off. So, yeah, yeah. I like it. As for me, I had Tennessee beating the Zags to go Final Four. And I'm sticking with that now, uh, meeting up against Houston. Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I wanted to take the Zags. I did. But, dude, like that path for Gonzaga, you, you get McNeese, who everyone wants to pick. Mm-hmm. You get Kansas. Yo, <laughs> sorry that's... stream yard effect sorry. <clears throat> yeah if you if you saw the video you saw it but if not i whatever um <laughs> what was <laughs> i saying dude it, it messed me up gonzaga's uh, path yes gonzaga's path you have mcneese thank you brother you had yep. mcneese everyone wanted to pick you had kansas yes they're depleted it's still bill self it's still For kansas sure. you'd have to beat purdue who last i checked just it decimated Utah State, a very quality team, like yeah. destroyed them, and now would have to be either Creighton or Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if if I feel good with that. So I have Tennessee advancing to the Final Four to play Houston, UConn, and North Carolina on the other side. As for you, you have Duke going up against the Blue Jays. The Final Four. The Final Four. We'll start with the left side because we got that the same. The Huskies and the Tar Heels, two blue bloods going at it in the final four for a chance at the championship. Who have you got coming out on top? On the left, I originally had this, UConn versus UNC, and I'm sticking with my Huskies pick if I haven't made that clear. They're my team to beat. They're who I got. (laughs) going all the way but before i uh announce that jumping over to the right in a matchup where i did have creighton but i had houston beating creighton mm-hmm. i'm continuing the same path i got duke wow. going to the championship Whoa. and beating creighton i i cannot believe this that i have duke here but wow they've they've played me into they played me into their trap and I, I fell for it. Some might say they walked in your trap, took over your trap. Some might say. Some, some might say. Some but, might say that. But I'm going to take it back and end it with UConn winning it all. Wow. I 
it's so this is the cool thing about recording this too is like we both were decent on duke like again it's not like either of us picked vermont to upset yeah. them mm-hmm. but it's just a little like ah uh, i don't know a bad taste in my mouth right now yeah like, i don't know what their upside is and now you got them in the chip so yeah. mm-hmm. that speaks to their play yeah. as for me i have houston Facing off against Tennessee. Holy crap, I'm, <laughs> I made that harder mm-hmm. for myself. I agree with you in UConn beating North Carolina. They just look poised. It, it's insane. Dan Hurley has his guys fired up on 10, and I love yeah. it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I originally had them playing Houston. And I'm sticking with them picking Houston. I'm sticking with the boring pick. And I may as well leave the Huskies logo up there because I'm picking the Huskies to go back to back. Come on, UConn. Please don't let us down, bro. I <laughs> I had you last year, man. And it has been eating at my soul. I've been rocking with y'all so hard. Pause this, this run. And I got y'all to the end. Yeah. I I agree, and the biggest and the biggest thing they haven't shown me a single negative. They get yeah. They had what that like two minute stretch against Northwestern. We were like, yeah, that was a little sloppy. And Dan Hurley instantly after the game was like, yeah, I didn't like that stretch. We should have played better. I, I don't mm-hmm. like that seventeen point victory. I don't know. That doesn't feel good. And it's like you. He's Bro. serious too. He's yeah. not saying that as like a to give respect to Northwestern obviously he is, but like, no, he, he sincerely is like, Nope, that will cost us a chip. Yeah. Do not do those two minutes again. Yeah. Ever. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they will. So sticking with the Huskies. Agreed. Agreed. That's the vid. Let us know who you have in your either redemption bracket. If your pick is still kicking, I feel like for most people, it probably is, whether it's Houston, UConn, North Carolina, Tennessee, Purdue, whatever it may be. Um, but let us know who your pick is. Let us know any, any. I don't want to say upsets, but picks you disagree with um, in the comments. Mm-hmm. And before we go, you already know who it is. Ooh. Come on, bro. Well, Song silent, of the silent toad. If you know, you know he uh, Song of the he was in the news for some crazy stuff. I don't we'll know. Move. So yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll talk the moment we log off. I'll let you know. Yeah, sounds good. <clears throat> Song of the Podmo. What do you got? I got from the Portland man himself. Mm. The regular show sample. Breathe by Yeet. I love it. Fire song, bro. He he cooked it. on that. The beat is crazy. It's loud. It's in your face, but Yeet lets you know that he's there and you can keep up with it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, regular show, top one Cartoon Network show all Go. time. Argue Go. with your mother. I'm not Whoa. hearing it. You know, <laughs> <Rick> <laughs> own, Mordecai, biggest simp literally ever in yeah. anything ever By literally far. bro offs his best friend over some whatever um <sighs> song of the pot for me it's been the yeah, big talking point this week especially in yeah. like hip hop circles like that future metro booming but most importantly Kendrick Lamar <laughs> coming for nothing but domes. Yep. Listen, man, this is the we need this. We need some beef. I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to hear some battles. We got Nav getting involved. We got unfollowing Drake. Drake posting subliminals and captions. Like, bro, it's crazy. Kendrick missed you. Let's lock in. Yep. Y- you're beefing with Nav. Yep. Like, <clears throat> relax on my goat. Okay. Mm-hmm. Facts. So, you're you know but whatever that song is amazing metro is him future is him and uh that kendrick verse is on par with all of his other great stuff 
like this. Come on, baby. That's, That's the video for y'all. Mm-hmm. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. And we will see y'all in the next video. Later, everyone. Peace.